Hello, my name is Peter Raymer, and today we're going to look at how to call a form from another form in Microsoft Dynamics 365 for Finance and Operations. In past videos, I've shown you how you can create a simple form, and in other videos, I've shown you how you can create a menu item and add that menu item to the main menu structure. But what happens if you want to call another form from another form. We're going to look at that today. There's really two main options. One is you can use X++ code to call another form, um, but a more common way is to use a menu item button within a form. And once you do that, there's a few cool things that you can uh, take advantage of as well. So let's take a look. In this example, I've actually got a form where you can add make and models for cars. So for instance, a Honda Accord or a Honda Civic or a Ford Explorer. Um, in this first field, you type in the model that you want. And then the second field, you select from a drop down a list of makes that you would like um, to add. Um, well, what happens if uh, we want to add a new make and that's not listed in the dropdown. Normally we'd have to go all the way back out to the menu, find the make menu item, so we could go to that form, add that make within that table, then come back in here and add our model. Um, so one of the things that we wanna do is we essentially wanna add a menu item button that lets us go directly here. Um, so let's take a look at that. So I'm going to open my project and solution. I actually already have it open. This is a finance and operations project and solution. And then I've set my menu or my model to be the model that I'm adding forms and code to. Um, next, I've already got my RSM model form created. If I didn't, I would just um, type it into here and search and find it. Um, and then I could add that existing form to my project by selecting add project. Now that it's part of my project, I can double click on it and it will open the form designer here in the middle. On this right pane, I can see the design portion of this form. And I can see that I already have an action pane, a button group, and a menu item button. Um, but if we didn't, we could just right click on this design and say new action pane and that would create a new action pane which is this top um, strip pane right here where we can add our buttons. Once you have an action pane you can right click on that action pane and say new button group. You always need a button group um, uh, to add more buttons to. We could add an action pane tab, but that's really only if you've got a whole ribbon bar. In this case, we've got this thin uh, type of button, which is more common for this type of form. So you can add a button group. Once you have a button group, you can right click on that button and then say new, and you'll be presented with all the different types of buttons you're allowed to add. Specifically in this case, when we want to call another form from this form, um, the ideal button that we want to use is a menu item button. In uh, a later video, I'll show you how you can use X++ code and a regular button to call a form, um, but the menu item button um, is really useful for most scenarios. So I'll click on the menu item button. It's going to create a new menu item button control for me. And then we can open up the properties by right clicking and selecting properties. Once we see the properties, there's a few properties that we always want to set for a menu item button. The first thing we can do is we can rename the name if we'd like to be a little bit more um, helpful of a name. So you can see here previously I had named my button form menu item or menu function button make. Um, I could do the same thing. I could put the word make up front and then call it form menu function button control. That works fine. We just want to give it a name that we'll recognize as a developer. The next thing that we can set is we can set the text field. The text field is what's going to show 
um, here on this form. So I'll go ahead and, again, we already have a menu item button, but I'm just gonna create a second one. So I'll type in the word make, and then um, that makes sure that it shows that text um, on this form. The other things that you wanna set are maybe the help text, that's uh, really common. So we can say, um, you know, pushing this button will open the make form. Um, you can come up with something, whatever you want. Then the most important menu items that we need to set are the menu item type and the menu item name. So just like in our previous videos where I, I kind of explained what these differences are, display is used for opening forms, output is for classes, um, or yeah, sorry, action is for classes and output is for reports. Um, in this case, we wanna open another form. So we're gonna just leave this menu item as display. And then we actually already have a menu item um, that will open the make form. It's called RSM make right here. Um, if we didn't, we could create that display menu item first. But now that we're on this form, I'll click back on our menu item button and we'll go to our menu item name. Here I need to type in our menu item name. So I'll type in RSM make and hit enter. And now we've specified what should happen when this button is clicked. Um, at this point, we could be done. This button, when clicked, would open the make form. However, there's one more property that I'd like to show you that can be really useful when calling other forms. There is this data source properly, property. And so uh, this data source property lets us pick one of the data sources on our form. If we have multiple, we'll see more than one here. Um, but essentially when we do this and we pick the data source and set it on our menu item button, it means that when we click our button, it will actually pass in the currently selected record into the calling form. And that can be really useful um, because you can then filter that calling form or change the behavior of that calling form based on the record that you pass in. Um, this will show up in args.record and I'll show you that in just a second. So now that we've reopened this model form, I can see my make button. I'm not seeing my second make button because I um, didn't save and compile this form yet. Um, but if I click on the make button, one of the great things about me setting the data source for this button is that it will then now filter to whatever record that I'm currently on for uh, the the calling form as long as I have a relationship. So I'll explain that in a second, but let me show you what I mean. If I click this make button, it's automatically taking me to this Honda record. So if I had hundreds of records in here, maybe this was a sales order form, um, this or an item form, it would automatically filter to this record because I set the data source um, and because I have a relation between my source data source and the destination data source. And I'll show you that again in a second. But just to give you another example, if I pick um, this Ford record right here and I click make, it will show up right here. Um, I could then even create a new one and say, okay, I really want a Jeep Wrangler. Let me pick that one from our dropdown and then I can click our button and it will automatically filter to that record. Um, that's extremely powerful and a, a use that we have because of the menu item. The reason we get that again is because we have a relationship between this RSM model data source, which is on our source form, and then we're calling the RSM make form. So I'll go ahead and open up that designer. And if I look at the data sources, uh, it's got one data source called RSM make. And if I go look at my table for RSM model, which again, I can open up from the application explorer right here. I just had it open all already. I see that I have a relationship between the RSM model and the RSM make 
tables. And so that allows it so that when I pass in um, my data source through those properties, it will automatically filter my RSM make form to be the correct record. The other way that this would work is if my um, source form and my destination form have the exact same data source and I'm passing in that same data source, it will also filter. So what I mean by that is if here I have RSM model, if I had chosen to add a second data source called RSM make and I had joined it to RSM model and it was RSM make that I was passing into this menu item, um, it would also filter this uh, calling forms data source to be that record. So that's really, really powerful and really nice. It makes it uh, really easy for the user to get to the information they wanted. Okay, last thing. Let's say you've set the data source on your menu item, um, but it doesn't have a relationship. Maybe it's not possible to have the relationship that you want. Um, is it still possible to access this information? And the answer is yes, it is. So by us setting this data source, we can then go to the calling form, the RSM make form. I can then override the init method, which I do that by expanding these methods. And if I don't see the init has already been overridden, I can right click on methods and select override and then find init in the list. Because I've already overridden the init method, I won't see it there. But then when I double click on the init method, we can actually add some code to be able to read that value that we've passed in from the menu item button. The way we do that is we have an if statement and we check if element.args, which element refers to the form, args refers to all of the arguments that we've passed in to this form. So we first check to see if we have any arguments at all. Then we check if element.args.record. So specifically, did the calling form pass in a record? If we had not set the data source property here, we wouldn't have a um, element.args.record. So we wanna make sure that we have one. Um, because maybe this form could be called directly from a menu or um, indirectly from another form. Then if we have a record, we can check what type of records being passed in because we could pass in um, records of different type. The way we check the type is we say if element.args.record.tableID equals equals and then we use this global function called table name and table name lets us um, get the unique identifier from a table. So in this case, I'm trying to see, are we passing in a data source of type RSM model? And if we are, this will return a unique uh, record and it'll match um, the element.args.record.table ID um, that we're passing in. So if all of those are true, now what I can do is I can take the element.args.record um, value, which right now returns a common, which is um, kind of a whole other lesson, but a common is the base table type for a table. But so I can take that very generic table record and I can assign it to a table buffer of type RSM model. And so once I do that, what's really great is I now have IntelliSense um, to see all of the values on this table buffer. I can do the drop down. I can see all the different fields that I have on this table buffer, um, call any methods that I want. Um, I can use uh, all the values on this table buffer. And at this point, I haven't finished that code. I haven't written the rest of it, but we could use this uh, passed in record to filter the uh, uh, data source by overriding the execute query on the data source. We could control buttons um, or make certain fields visible or hidden, kind of anything we want um, now that we've passed in this uh, data from a calling form. Um, so one of the real advantages that we get um, by using a menu item button is that we don't have to code 
to be able to pass in a record to the calling form. And very often we don't have to code to also filter that calling form based on the record we're passed in. Um, so I know that was a lot, but hopefully you've learned something uh, new today. Um, and thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you watching. If you like the video, click the like button. I also invite you to push the subscribe button as well. If there's other topics you would like to see a video on, please post in the comments and I'll see what I can do. I hope you learned something new today. Thank you.